In this video, I'm going to show you how to take your Turk Fin 20 IO link module and get it communicating with a Micro 850 PLC. The method I'm showing you in this video works with a select group of Micro 850 and Micro 870 PLCs. We can still get data into the other ones, but for this one, we're going to be using Ethernet IP Class 1 messaging, which is pretty much what Studio 5000 uses. We're going to start with a new program, and this is the important part of this one. We're going to go to controllers, and in this case, I'm going to go to the Micro 850. And there's two categories here. We have an L50E and we have an LC50. This method only works with the L50E. Same if we open up the Micro 870, we have an L70E. So it's going to work here. It's going to work here. If we open up here and notice we don't have that nice folder or there or there. So we're in these two PLCs right here. And your trainer is going to come with a 2080 L50E 24 QBB. We're going to select it and add to project. And before we do anything else, we are going to set up our IP on this PLC. Because remember, it defaults to DHCP. And if you're using one of our trainers, its default IP address is going to be 192, 168, 1, 10. Now, I am actually doing some Studio 5000 videos while I'm doing this. So I have this one set at 44, but just keep yours at 10. And our subnet of 255, 255, 255, is going to be just fine. Now, I'm getting ready to do some routing videos, so you don't need to do this step. But just so I already have it done, I'm going to put a gateway on mine of 192.168.1.1. But you can leave that blank. And then if you're using the L50E inside of here, we have modules. And here is where we can add modules just like we would to the I.O. configuration of Studio 5000. So I'm going to click the Add button. And I'm going to call this my I.O. link. And the IP address of the I.O. link module is 192.168.1.15. And typically figuring out this stuff is by far the most difficult part. But this Turk module is the most intuitive module I have ever used. And if we go to its IP address in a web browser, 192.168.1.15, and at the top we go to Documentation and then Ethernet IP, here is our connection input and output assembly instances and sizes. Now, these are integers. That's the only thing you have to know here. But our assembly instance is 103 with a size of 103. So I'm going to take and select a data type of int here. And it'll be an instance of 103 and a size of 103. And our output is 104 with a size of 67. 104, 67, and you can leave the configuration at 1 with a size of 0. We click OK. And let's go ahead and download this program to make sure our connection works. And if you need any help downloading your program or configuring your IP addresses, we have lessons on all of that. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I'm going to put it back in run mode. And before we go any further, right here on the connection, we want to make sure it says running. And if it doesn't say running, make sure you got this IP address right. And make sure you got these numbers right here right. Really, if you have all that, this will reliably work. Now let's open up our global variables and see what we got. So if we go down and find IO link I, that's going to be our inputs. And we are getting some data off of this already. And if I stick my hand over top of our photoelectric, we see the value changing as I move my hand back and forth. And if I stick my hand over top of the capacitive prox, we see something changing in number one. And this is what I love about this Turk module is there is no guessing on this. Right here is our IO link data. We so of word offset one. Channel 0's digital input will be bit 1. Channel 1 will be bit 1. Channel 2 will be bit 2. And we're not using channel 3. If I hit my arrow by word 0, then we should be able to see channel 1 and channel 2 because these are discrete inputs. 
So I'm going to stick my screwdriver because remember, port one is an inductive proxy and it requires metal in front of it. And we see bit one. And port two is a capacitive proxy. So my hand will work over it. So I stick my hand in front of it and we get port two. Now we already saw data coming across on word two as I was moving my finger back and forth. It does say that channel zero's data begins on word two. Now we need to learn about IIOD files and we're gonna to need to do some bit manipulation and scaling to get our distance measurement into some type of units such as millimeters or inches. And I've created this playlist right here that'll guide you along that.